Hi, my name's Tom, and I'm excited to introduce you to Embeddable. Embeddable is basically a developer toolkit for building fast, interactive, customer-facing analytics directly into your product. What that means in practice is that you can build experiences like this to embed inside your online web application. That means that your end users can come in, they can interact with the analytics and play with them, and they can even build out their own dashboards and analytics so they can answer their own questions. And this is fully customizable, so it looks and feels exactly like your platform. But how does that work in practice? In practice, what that means is, is that Embeddable gives you a, a no-code experience for building out analytics experiences like this. So as you might expect, you can move around your components, build your charts. But what really differentiates Embeddable is that every single one of these components are actually React.js components that you control fully in your code so that you can get that pixel perfect look and feel for your application. But that doesn't mean that these don't become fully interactive. I can still, for example, take my pie chart, interact with it. I'm basically interacting with all the available data. And this in the end behind the scenes is going and passing in the available props to my React component. So for example, I can change the title here and maybe I'll change you know, what data we're seeing here. And behind the scenes, this will automatically load the data and build out your, your dashboard. Embeddable is also built from the ground up to be for customer facing analytics. What that means in practice is that you can trivially jump between different customers so that you can see what the data looks like for every single customer. And you can even play with different themes so you can get a feel for, for what your dashboard would look like, maybe for different users. Let's dive into how this works behind the scenes. Look at this green box. This green box basically represents code that sits inside your Git repo, inside your source control. So you've got the components themselves. So these are the React components that make up the look and feel. You can use our out of the box, beautiful components to start, or you can bring in your favorite charting library. As long as it's React compatible, it will work. We also have a semantic layer built using data models where you basically define your single source of truth for each of your components. And we have a caching config layer where you can configure how the caching should work so you can get that super fast dashboards. All of this sits within your code. And as you make changes to these, they will automatically get pushed to the no code experience, which is the one we've, we've seen here. Once you're happy with those changes, you'll click publish and publish basically means that it goes live and becomes embedded inside your application. Just to show you how easy that is. If we go back to our example app here. And if I go to view page source, what you'll notice is that it's literally a tiny little web component. We do not use iframes. And so this becomes a native part of your DOM. And you can embed it anywhere there's HTML. So that can be inside React application, view application, Angular, or even in mobile, as long as it's got a web view. And you can even interact with it. So it becomes an interactive part of your application where you can react to clicks and interactions, and you can pass state in and out of those applications. The important thing, however, is obviously security. And so behind the scenes, in order to render a dashboard, the first thing you need to do is retrieve what we call a security token from our tokens API. And the way our tokens API works is it basically allows you to give all the context you need for the data model so that it can know how to render the dashboard to make sure that every single end user is only ever seeing, only ever have access to exactly the data that they should be allowed to see. Then behind the scenes, Embeddable will retrieve data from the data service, which in the end is hitting your, your database or your databases. We support multi-tenant, single tenant, whatever setup you have. And, and then we have row level security built in as a first class citizen, as well as a number of caching layers that allows you to get that super fast performance out of your dashboards if that's what you need. Let's actually build a dashboard from scratch. And as part of that process, I'll show you how the components work, how the models work, and then how you build the interactivity for your dashboard. So I've got a blank canvas here, which is my blank dashboard. The first thing I want to do is I'll add a component and I'm gonna choose a very, very simple one to start with, my text component. It just has a, a title and a, a body. So I'm gonna say, hello world and add that. And as you can imagine, it gets added, you can move it around, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I chose this because it's a really nice, simple example for us to start with. Let's have a look at what the code behind that component looks like. 
So as you can see, it's just a, a very, very normal React component. And we've defined the title and body as the input props. And then I'm just using a H1 and a P flag to, to render. You can apply any styling you'd like, any libraries you like. It doesn't matter as long as it works in React, it will work. Um, but the important thing is, is that inside our application, we don't just want to render it, we actually want to make it interactive. So we've got these, for example, the titles and the, and the, and the body here. This is done using a companion object like this. So you can see here, uh, we're calling define component, which basically says we are defining a, a new type of component that should be available to embeddable. And the important thing is we're defining these inputs. So we've got, uh, you know, title and body here. You'll notice that's title and body here. You can see the type here is string for both of these. And what that means is it tells Embeddable, okay, we should actually ask for a text input for each of these. You can imagine similarly, if you were to choose number type or a date type or various data types, it will render a different UX for the end user in order to interact with your component with the dashboard. And we'll see a few examples of this as we go. So next, let's add a more interesting component. We'll choose a donut chart. Donut chart will actually load data from our database. So in this case, it's asking for a, a data set. So I'm going to create a data set here. I'll explain this in a second. So we'll choose our, for example, our customer's data set. I'll click confirm. And then I need to choose a measure and dimension. In this case, I'll choose the count of orders and I'll choose the, the country. What we'll notice is that that should hopefully nicely render our, our chart or our data here. But what's going on behind the scenes? So first of all, just to point out, you've got a whole host of different inputs. These have just been defined in a very, very similar way to how we did it with our Hello World component. But the interesting part is how do we get this data into our component? So let's have a look at data modeling. We have a data model editor, which basically allows you to define what we call data models. So you can see our customers and orders here. Basically, it's just a name. We define a core table, and then we define these things called dimensions and measures. If you're familiar with a lot of other BI tools, um, you'll be familiar with a similar syntax. And so basically think of dimensions as your kind of virtual columns and measures as your aggregates. So you can see I've got my, for example, uh, full name column or field, virtual field here. And I've just defined the SQL that's defining that. And similarly, I've got a, a country one, which is taking the, the country here. And I've got similar ones for this. What that allows me to do is then dynamically generate queries based on that. So you define this single source of truth. And then if I go to my data playground here, I can choose my customer's model. Again, maybe let's choose a country and a count just to see what that looks like. And what you can see is it's generated that SQL. So we can have a, have a look at what SQL our models are generating and you can see the results. So behind the scenes, you're just defining the single source of truth for your, for your models. Um, you can use our no-code editor or you can use the code version of this and put this in source control, which is also very, very popular customers. So that allows you to build out this and, and basically bring in data from all sorts of different sources. Let's finish by adding some interactivity. I'll add a multi-select dropdown. Again, it's asking me where should the data come from? So I'm going to choose my data set that I created a second ago, and we'll choose our, our list of countries again. So if I go and preview that, what you'll notice is that it's automatically put those countries into the list and loaded those from the database. But if I select them, you'll notice nothing's happened. That's because we haven't added any interactivity yet. So what I'll do is, this dropdown is actually connected to my variables over here. And what I've got is a data set that's powering this chart. And so if I go into the data set and I add a filter, for example, country equals, and I connect it to a variable, what's going to happen is when I make changes to my component, that's going to update the variables, which will update the filters, which will update my chart. So let's go and see that in action. So here we are. I'll pick a couple of countries to see what happens. And you can see it's interactively updating that as we go. The final thing I want to point out is just how easy it is to embed and how the kind of security model works behind the scenes. Once you want to embed, as we talked about, you basically embed a simple web component into your front end like this. But the important thing is you're going to ask for a token, what we call a security token, in order to do that. The way the token works is that on your server side, on your back end, you're going to call a security tokens API using an API key, which we supply. You need to keep this secure. 
And what you basically just say is, well, I want to render this particular dashboard, so dashboard ID, and I'm going to provide this security context, which is the context for the models that's going to allow those models to decide what it's going to render. And so if we look at an example, you can see I might have my orders model. And actually, you can see that it's retrieving all the data from orders and it's filtering where the user ID is equal to the, the user ID from our security context. So what we do is basically pass in that security context and it allows us to do row level security, schema level security. We also support database level security. Anyway, I hope that's given you a nice overview of what Embeddable is all about. We'd be super excited to have you try it out and give us feedback. Please reach out if you have any questions or have any trouble.